So I'm going to look at some twists here. I want to take a look at some really, really, really strange looking functions and see what kind of twists this makes on the domain and range. Case in point, let's look at this. Okay. Notice this has got to be a radical function, which tells you right away, ah, oh, the big restriction is that x cannot be less than zero. Okay. Right, so no negatives. This guy's kind of interesting as well. We'll get to that in a second. So let's do this. Okay, this means f of g of x. Well, what's g of x? Oh, minus x squared plus 2x. Yippee skippy. So f is this, and we're going to put whatever g of x is, we're going to put right it in there. Okay, so there's minus x squared plus 2x, leaving you with a nice beautiful function that says the square root of minus x squared plus 2x. Hmm fascinating let's figure out the domains and ranges now i've got the calculator all set and ready to go here but what i want to do is i want to look at the original functions and i just want to make a couple conclusions from the original functions so i'm going to shut off the composition right there and i just want to look at the originals the original was oh there's a radical and there's something in here now remember a couple things about your radical remember radicals don't like anything that is negative so if you think about it, you've got this beautiful radical coming out this way, but look what you also have here. Huh, interesting. You have this kind of uh, parabolic shape here. Hmm, I wonder what the composition's gonna look like. So I'm gonna shut these two lines off and I just wanna look at the composition itself. Okay, so let's shut this guy off here. Let's shut this guy off here and let's just look at the composition which is this guy here and let's highlight it again and bring them equals to so that means if it's shaded like this guess what it's going to graph it so there's our y1 y2 okay so this is our g of x inserted into our f of x let's graph it let's see what we get oh my isn't that interesting so we just got just that little arc that was in the parabola that was it well, think of the reason why is because, of course, you cannot take a square root of a negative number. That's the reason why. So what is our domain? What is our range? It looks like our domain is from 0 to 2, and our range would be from 0 to 1. Interesting. Okay, so let's bring that up. So our domain here is all values of x such that x has to be between 0 and 1. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, our range then is all values of y such that y has to be between 0 and 1. Okay, now, oh, wait a second. That was supposed to be between 0 and 2. My apologies. Let's go back. 0 and 2. There we go. Boy, that's, that's really weird that we would get a value that looks like that. But again, what I think was important here was that the graphing really, really helps us out. So, okay, let's go to C here. I'm going to clear my calculator and let's go to C. So if you remember with C, we want the G of X now, sorry, the F of X now to go inside the G of X. So let's see what happens here, okay? So I'm just going to just going to do the graph for it right now and we'll take a look at it in a second algebraically all right so alpha one i'm going to take my y2 there it is okay i'm going to bracket it i'm going to put my y1 in there boom and i'm going to graph this right away i'm not going to give you the results until i do the algebra first okay so on we go algebra time okay think of what g of x was g of x has to have f of x inserted into it so remember g of x was this minus bracket squared plus 2x well that means it's got to be inserted twice that means wherever there was an x this has to go here and here so there's a square root of x there's a square root x so this becomes oh think about it square root of x squared is just x so this is minus x plus 2 root x well, that looks kind of weird. I wonder what the domain and range for that is. Okay, let's go back to our calculator again. And again, I want to shut off this stuff here. I want to see what this guy looks like before I go out and graph it so that I can make a couple of conclusions here. Some, maybe some estimates as to what this is going to look like. So here's my two original graphs here and here. Do you remember? Okay, now let's go back to this guy here. Okay, shut that guy off. Shut that one off and turn that one, boom, 
so that we can see it. Okay, here we go. Graph it. Let's see what we got. Woo! Is that ever interesting looking? So it looks like it's starting here very, very, very close to zero, going up to here, okay, up to a maximum of one, and then just steadily declining from here. So our domain looks like it starts right here, but is my domain actually starting there? Well, it's going to be hard to tell from my graph now, isn't it? But remember that this is not a high-res calculator. What you kind of have to remember is where did this graph start? It started right here at that zero, zero point. Okay, so chances are that, yeah, okay, domain here then is going to be all values of x such that x has got to be greater or equal to zero. x is an element of r. Your range here then, of course, is going to be all values of y such that y, your maximum here looks like 1. It's got to be less than and equal to 1 and y is an element of r. But I know what you're probably saying to yourself. How can you prove that that's there? How can you prove that that's actually at 0, 0? The graphing calculator, again, this is one of the faults of this graphing calculator, is how can you prove that? Because it doesn't look like it's at 0, 0. Real simple. Go into your y equals 2, put in another equation. And the other equation I'm going to put down is y equals to 0. And I'm going to graph it. So if this works, this should intersect and give you 0, 0 as a value. Okay, so I'm going to go second, calc. I'm going to find my intersect, 5. I'm going to go enter. There's my the black line. There's my purple line. I'm going to guess, and sure enough, the intersection's at 0, 0. It tells you it starts right there and even blinks. So again, what I'm teaching you here is a little bit of interesting things. I'm teaching you the fact that your calculator, although it's not high res, you can overcome that high res part of it by putting in a, a fourth equation and trying to calculate some intersects. So, okay, let's write out our domains again. Do you remember the domain? The domain of all x values such that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Right, x is an element of r. And our range then, remember, because it had that little bump, it went from zero, zero, gave you that bump, and then went down like that. How tall was that bump? That bump was at 1. So y has to be less than or equal to 1, and y is an element of r. Really some interesting, interesting, interesting graphs here.